Hi, welcome back to All Flowers. Today we're out and about in our local area and um, it's Elm Flower. So we've already gotten what we need. So we actually need at the moment is 60 heads, um, which is enough for us to do. We'd normally do two 15 litre buckets, which would get us about 60 bottles. Um, sorry, 30 bottles. Um, but this year, the buckets, this year the buckets we have are slightly smaller, so the 12 litres. So I haven't done the match yet, so I'll do that when I get back. So I've picked the same amount that we normally pick, and I'm hoping to encourage Mr. Wallflowers to make a little bit more. Um, and then we'll get the match going because I'd like to do the white and pink like I did last year, um, adding some red berries. And I think it just give it that touch of novelty and that touch of difference. Um, and they were both very enjoyable. So basically, I've got my apple crab and apple uh, thing. It's not great, but it gives me the opportunity to reach something I wouldn't normally be able to reach. I put my thumbnail through the stem and pull it. You have to be careful you're not pulling them off too aggressively because sometimes you can pull the whole stem. I've got batches of batches of some beautiful ones here, absolutely perfect. So we're going to get take those home and put it together and get our mixture together. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're back in the kitchen now to finish off making, well, to actually start making the elderflower champagne. So I've separated 30 and I'm just going to show you how to make one bucket. Obviously, I'm making two. So I've got 30 heads, my bucket ready. Now I needed four litres of hot water. So for me, that's a, a pan and a kettle full. So the easiest way I can think of doing it is to add the hot water to the bucket first then to add a kilo of sugar watch me spill it everywhere Make sure that sugar is dissolved. Just give it a stir around. And you just, instead of it being cloudy, just try and stir that till you can get it almost clear again. And you know the sugar is completely dissolved. I'm quite happy with that. I can see right the way through all around the bucket. Then I'm going to add three tablespoons of my zested orange. So basically it's just orange peel that I've dehydrated and then ground in the coffee grinder. So amazing how useful these flavours come in. So that's one. Two. three and of course as you know if you've started dehydrating yet and rehydrating as soon as you introduce the dehydrated orange lemon vegetable whatever it is you've de dehydrated as soon as you introduce it to the hot water give it five or ten minutes and it's, kind of, it's rehydrated so got all that lovely orange in there again just giving it a stir now I want to add two tablespoons of the apple cider vinegar. Now again, you know, you can add any vinegar at all, really. Um, apple cider vinegar is meant to be the best. But when I, which I will be doing soon, when I make um, my rosé version that I made last year with red fruits, I'll actually use red wine vinegar um instead of the apple cider vinegar um just because i've got it and it suits the occasion so why not <laughs> so that's the one i'll be using for that 
and nice stir again. Smells lovely. But at the moment, all you can see is the water with little bits of orange floating in it. Which, of course, when we... Now I'm going to put the elderflowers, elderflowers in. Steep them in. Make sure they're completely, completely immersed. Give them a good stomping. See the orange mingling in now with the elderflower. It's the dehydrated bits. I'm quite happy with that. And I know the sugar's dissolved. So I'm literally going to top this up. As I said, I had difficulties with these buckets. We'd normally like a 15 litre bucket, but this happens to be a 12. So where I'd normally say four litres of hot water and six litres of cold, I'm going to chance my arm on this one. So I've got all the main ingredients in and now to add the cold water. So that's one litre of cold water. So this amounts to two and a half litres. That's three and a half litres. Um, and I think I'll fill that again. Just bear with me one moment. And as you can hear in the background, yes, I did use tap water. Um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, using bottled water, having your water cleansed and everything. That's all well and good if you've got that to hand or you can afford those facilities. But not everyone can. Um, you know, not all these we call rich people, Champagne Charlies, you know. Um, and we relate champagne to rich people and everything. This is costing me what the price of a bag a uh, bag of sugar and the time that it took me to put the, the little extras together. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous. We can all have champagne and we can all have it in abundance if that's what we want. You know, I'm not a big drinker, but I do like a glass of champagne. So we've got that all immersed. And that's basically it for that side of it. So the next stage now is to cover this and put it in a cool, dark place. Um, so mine will be somewhere in the pantry, um, probably on the floor somewhere, but well covered up. Um, and we shall leave it for two days. Now, when we come back after that two days, we're looking, if you can see the surface of the flowers, we're looking for it uh, to clump together, not quite mould mould, but to form, um, pull together and form like a like a bit of mould. It's the only word I can use, really. Ferment. Uh, to ferment it. Thank you, Mr. Wallflowers. To ferment. Um, and if you see after the two-week period, there's no change. Your flowers just look the same. There's no fermenting process taking place. That's a much nicer word, isn't it? Um, then you need to consider um, adding the tiniest of pinches of yeast to it. Um, for example, there was a film a video by Hugh Fernley Whittinson and he made the champagne, but he made a hundred bottle um, recipe all at, all at the same time and his didn't ferment by the second day so we added a pinch to a container that was holding enough for 100 bottles of champagne now obviously we don't know if we're getting 12 13 how many we're going to get out of this normally we'd average uh 15 bottles from a bucket um so you know you've you've got to cut that right the way down so it's a scarce pinch you're literally picking up the tiniest of crumbs you're not actually throwing in a good help and a pinch of salt what you would when you were cooking you, you're looking for the tiniest of bits and just add that and see give it another two days see how it goes you know but um and the the elderflowers are you know they're everywhere now to go out and pick them and they're looking glorious 
um, I accepted some cuttings from a neighbour um, a couple of years ago uh, they were tidying the house up to sell um, rather than all the green waste go I accepted it to be put in amongst some plants in a, in a front lawn area where we were growing a load of other plants and a piece of this elderflower's took now to me I, I take that in the grace it was meant. I accepted what was called rubbish at the time and now I've been given an elderflower tree in my garden and to me, you know, that, that's good karma and I'm quite happy with that. Um, and I'm hoping from, we've just got a couple from this year, but I'm hoping the next few years we'll be able to make champagne from our own tree in our own garden and that'll even be better for me, you know. When we've gone to pick these today, we've gone up beside a dual carriageway um, I don't think it actually shows on the video, but I'm sure you could hear the traffic in the background. Um, and it's not a lot of, I see other people doing, you know, I don't see a lot of people picking from the hedgerows. I hear about it in the groups that I follow, but in everyday life in my town, I don't see an awful lot of people doing it. Um, it would amaze me and it, it would make my day if I saw someone else picking whilst I was out. But yeah, a few people beep the horn and think you're crazy, you know, and I think, well... You go to the pub and sink your lagers and pay a fortune and when this beauty comes through I'll have a couple of glasses of champagne and enjoy my evening too. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a card um, to link you um, for the bottling champagne video I made last year. Um, this is my new and improved updated version. Uh, feel free to go and take a, take a look at yes, last year's champagne making video too. But I will attach the, the bottling to it because I'm not about to redo that at the moment because obviously it's, it's going to take me four or five weeks uh, for this to process before I start bottling up. Okay, enjoy nature. Go out and take what you can. I did another little ivy pick for some um, detergent today as well. So I've got that to do later on. Um, but yeah. Another good day foraging. Okay. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you do, please click the like button so I'm getting an indication that people are actually enjoying the material I'm actually putting out. Um, I'll see you soon. Bye.